for a thorough dynamic force analysis of an engine, we need to consider the inertia forces of all the moving components, namely piston and connecting rod. In this video, we are going to solve a numerical problem on dynamic force analysis of a horizontal engine, considering both weight of the piston as well as the connecting rod and their inertia effects. Though the problem can be solved by both analytical and graphical method, we will be solving this problem by graphical method in this video. Okay, so let's get started. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I am Dr. V. Jai Kumar. I am making lecture videos for the benefit of mechanical engineering students. If this is your first time and not yet subscribed, please press the subscribe button and also the bell notification icon so that to get notified all my forthcoming videos. Let us understand the force analysis problems very clearly. Those engine force analysis problem can be broadly classified under uh, two categories, namely static force analysis and dynamic force analysis. We have elaborately discussed and solved numerical problems on static force analysis, which can be understood by seeing my lecture videos two, three, and four. Then the dynamic force analysis we have studied under uh, two subcategories. One is only considering the weight of the reciprocating parts without considering the connecting rod. And we have solved those problems. That dynamic force analysis of engines are presented in lecture numbers 5, 6, 7, and 8. What are we going to do now is we are going to consider weight of the connecting rod and its inertia effect while doing the dynamic force analysis which are presented under four lecture videos, 9 to 12. In this video, we are going to solve a numerical problem considering the connecting rod by using graphical method. Is that clear? So this will give you the overview of engine force analysis problems. Before proceeding into the problem directly, we need to do quick recap of the important concepts that are required to solve this problem. In lecture six, we have talked about various forces that are acting on IC engine, namely inertia force of the piston, weight of the piston acting downwards, then Fn, normal force acting vertically upward, then Fq, force component along connecting rod, then we add that two components, namely perpendicular to the crank, which is nothing but Fp, another one is parallel to the crank, which we call it as F suffix B, so in addition to those forces, we are going to consider two additional forces, namely weight of the connecting rod WC and inertia of the connecting rod FC. Okay, we are going to use the same notations that we have used so far in this study. We are going to do solve graphical method. So we are going to employ Klein's construction procedure while solving the problem. And also while solving, we need to replace the connecting rod by two masses correction couple concept will not be used for graphical method, which will be used while solving the analytical method. Okay, let us come to the connecting rod right now. First, let us see what are the various forces acting on the connecting rod. So this one is inertia force of the piston. Then this is weight of the reciprocating parts. This is normal force acting perpendicular to the cylinder walls. Then here I have weight of the connecting rod. Then this is inertia force of the connecting rod F suffix V, direction not yet known. Then we have other two components FT. Another one is radial component which will be acting radially outwards you know of this OC. So these are the various forces that are acting on the connecting rod. So our aim is to determine these values. So we are going to solve it by graphical method. As I said, it is a graphical method. We need to follow some step-by-step -step procedure. For your simplicity, I have given those steps one by one. 
Do not worry about them. We are going to employ those steps one by one while solving the problems. Uh, these are the eight steps that are required to complete the problem. This is the numerical problem which we are going to solve. Shall we uh, read the problem carefully? The connecting rod of a horizontal reciprocating engine is 400 mm. So they have given us the connecting rod length L is equal to 400 mm and length of the stroke is 200 mm. As you could see, once if stroke length is given, we can say that they have indirectly given the value of crank radius. Crank radius equal to stroke by 2. Mass of the reciprocating parts 125 kg. So we call it as M suffix R is given there. And that of the connecting rod is 100 kg. You could see there the mass of the connecting rod is given. I call it as a MC is given. The radius of gyration of the connecting rod about an axis passing through the center of gravity is 120 mm. So this is radius of gyration K. Okay. And the distance of center of gravity of the connecting rod from bigger end center is given. The bigger end, I call it as crank pin C and the center of gravity as G. So probably they have given the distance C to G. The engine runs at 750 RPM. This is what engine speed N. So we need to determine torque exerted on the crankshaft. What they mean? They mean to find the T value when the crankers turn 30 degree from IDC. So theta equal to 30 degree is given. Since RPM is given very well, we can find the angular velocity of the crank by using the formula 2 pi n by 60, substituting the value we must be getting omega value as 78.54 radians per second. Okay. Shall we apply all those steps listed one by one now? Okay. This is step number one. Step number one is we have to draw Klein's acceleration diagram. Before drawing the diagram, let me choose a scale. Going by the length and radius, I have chosen this scale. One centimeter equal to 50 mm. I'm going to use this color coding for your better understanding, okay? The first step is to draw the configuration diagram as always. How to draw them, you must be knowing by now easily. First, draw the line of stroke. Then somewhere you fix the point O. Then just use the crank angle theta and R value. Then you'll be getting the C. From the C, knowing the CP value, connecting rod length, you cut an arc you'll be getting P. So by using the value of theta, R and L, we should be able to complete the configuration diagram, which is nothing but OCP. Okay. Having drawn the configuration diagram, the next step is to draw the velocity diagram. So how to do that? Let me extend the PC line here. Then let me draw a perpendicular line from O these two lines will intersect at a point. That point is M. Now, I will be simply joining this O, C, M. I will get a triangle. That triangle is what we call it as Klein's velocity diagram. Now, let us draw the acceleration diagram by using the procedure. First, let me take C as a center, C, M as a radius. I can draw the circle. Similarly, taking G as a center and PG as a radius, I can draw the second circle. These two circles will intersect at two points, namely K and L. Let me join KL. The line KL intersects PC at Q, then line of stroke PO at N. I am getting two points Q and N. So let me join now O, C, Q, N. O, C, Q, N. Let me join. 
If you join that, you'll be getting a quadrilateral. That quadrilateral is what known as client's acceleration diagram. Clear? In this, you just join the line CN, which gives the total acceleration of the connecting rod. If you want to know acceleration of the piston, this vector NO will give you the value of acceleration component. Okay? What is there in the step number one? Our aim is to find inertia force of the piston. If I know mass of the piston and acceleration of the piston, we can find inertia force of the piston. Am I right? Yes. This will give you acceleration of piston. So to find acceleration of the piston, I should know NO. So by measurement, I am getting about 2.1 centimeter. I have to multiply by scale. So I am getting 105 mm. Now, F5 is equal to mass of the piston. Yes, by calculating, I am getting this value. Okay. In the next step, we are going to replace the mass of the connecting rod by dynamically equivalent system of two masses, M1 and M2. So we would like to have probably M1 here. M2 will be located around some point here. That point is D. We need to find the location of mass 2. That can be obtained by two methods. One is by using some small calculation. Another one by doing graphically. I am going to do by method 1. Okay. We know that from dynamically equivalent system concept, L1 into L2 equal to K square. So using this, I can find the L2. They are given GC value as 160 mm. From this, I can find L1, which is nothing but 400 minus 160, 240 mm. Now I can very well find L2. Now I am going to locate location of the second mass D. So 60 mm, I need to convert into the equivalent scale. This is my point D. What is the meaning there? The meaning is we have replaced the mass of the connecting rod by two masses. One is assumed to be acting at P, another one is acting at D. So location of the second mass is the step number two, which you have completed now. Okay, let us go to step number three. So I need to determine acceleration of point G as well as point D. It says on the acceleration image line CN, locate D and G. How can I do? So from G, draw a parallel line parallel to the line of stroke till it intersects CN. That intersection point is small g. Clear? Well, can we get point D? Yes. Same way, from point D, Draw a parallel line, parallel to the line of stroke till it intersects the CN line. It will be intersecting at a point. That point, I call it as small letter D. Now, you just join O to G. Similarly, join O to D. Join OG, join OD. Measure GO multiplied by omega square we will get acceleration of point G. Measure DO multiplied by omega square, you will be getting acceleration of point D. Is that clear for you? So acceleration of point G is equal to omega square multiplied by GO. So by measurement, I am getting the value of GO. I am getting about two centimeter multiplied by my scale, I am getting around 100 mm. Now I can complete this, right? So by calculating, I am getting acceleration of G as 616.85 meter per second square. The direction is from G to O. Now, once we know acceleration of the connecting rod, can we get to the inertia force of the connecting rod? Yes. Now, 
we can find inertia force of the connecting rod. Mass of the connecting rod multiplied by acceleration of the connecting rod. Mass is 100 multiplied by yes. Inertia force will be acting from the direction opposite to that acceleration of G direction. So it will be from O to G. Right, let us move on to step number four. The aim of the step number four is very simple. We need to determine direction of inertia force. So what I'm going to do, I am going to draw from point D a line parallel to small d o. Okay. Now from point D, I have drawn a parallel line parallel to d o. So these two must be parallel. When I draw a parallel line, that line intersects line of stroke at one point. That point is what I call point E. Before proceeding further, we have to clarify one important concept here. Theoretically, we are replacing the connecting rod by two masses. One mass is placed at P. This will be the direction of acceleration of mass 1. Where is the mass 2? Mass 2 is located at point D. What is the direction of acceleration of mass 2? This will be acting here. So that means we have two masses. The acceleration direction is here and here. So that intersection point is at E. So when these acceleration of two masses are intersecting at a point, that means the resultant acceleration of the connecting rod must pass through the intersection point. So what I'm going to do, I want to find direction of acceleration of connecting rod. From where I will start? I will start from point E. So what I'm going to do? I am going to draw a line from point E, which is parallel to GO. So from E, draw a line which is parallel to OG line. So these two are parallel. Yes, the line which is drawn from point E is nothing but the direction of inertia force of the connecting rod. Now we have magnitude and direction of inertia force of the connecting rod. Okay, yes. Right, now we'll move on to step number five. Okay, what are the forces acting at the smaller end? We know that there is a inertia force of the piston. Here we have normal force Fn. What will be the direction? This will be the direction. Okay, so what I will do from here, let me extend this line, Fn, right. What is the other force acting here? Weight of the connecting rod downward, right. From here, I will have Fr. What is Fr? Radial force, which will be acting away from the crank, which call it as a radial force Fr. What the step says now, extend the line of action of FR and FN to intersect at a point I, which is nothing but instantaneous center of connecting rod. So I am going to extend them. This intersection point is instantaneous center I. Right, let us go to step number six. Step number six says that from instantaneous center I, draw IX and IY perpendicular to the lines FC and WC. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw first IX. How? Perpendicular to the lines FC. How can I draw? So for that, let me I'm extending the line FC. From there, 
I need to draw perpendicular line. So what I'm going to do, I am going to draw a perpendicular here. So this intersection point, I call it as X. Now I need to find Y. How? By drawing perpendicular to this. From weight of the connecting rod, that means through point G, draw a perpendicular. From I, draw a horizontal. This intersection point is what we call it as Y, right? Is there any force? We have one more force here, which is perpendicular to the crank, that is FT. Okay. So now I will find moment about instantaneous center I. Let us put all the counterclockwise movements on one side and some of the clockwise movements on the other side. Okay. Moment about FT and perpendicular distance IC. What is the direction? This will be giving you in the counterclockwise direction. So I am writing here FT multiplied by IC is counterclockwise direction. Is there anything else gives counterclockwise about I? WC into I clockwise. FN passing through I zero. So FI again clockwise. So now next I will go to inertia force. So I can write Fi multiplied by perpendicular distance Ip gives the clockwise moment. Inertia force of the connecting rod also produces clockwise moment. Fc multiplied by what is the perpendicular distance? Ix. The moment due to Wc about I again it will create clockwise couple. So I will put weight of the connecting rod multiplied by IY. What about moment due to FR? Zero. Why? It is passing through the instantaneous center itself. What is the moment due to FN? Zero. Why? FN passing through the instantaneous center itself. Is that clear? This equation can be written when we, we assume the connecting rod is under equilibrium. Here we need to find these values IC, IP, IX, and IY. We have to measure these values from the diagram what we have drawn. Okay. So by measurement, we get IC, IP, IX, and IY. Okay. So I am getting about 9.2 centimeter multiplied by 50 is 460 mm. Okay. IP by measurement, I am getting it as 275 mm. Okay. Then IX, I am getting around 140 mm. Then IY, I am getting about 4.7 centimeter. So I am multiplied by scale. I am getting the answer as 235 mm. Okay. We know all the values, isn't it? We got Fi from step number one, Fc from step three, then weight of the connecting rod is given. All other answers are known. I am going to substitute here. Shall I? So substituting them here, I should get this answer. On simplification, by using your calculator, you must be getting this value of Ft. So we got force perpendicular to the crank which is nothing but FT. That is the step number six. Is that clear? Yes. The final step here, our aim is to find turning moment acting on the crankshaft. Turning moment is equal to FT into crank radius R. So just now we found FT 66,523.7 crank radius 100 mm. So from this, I could get my answer. Right, this is the magnitude. Now, how to find direction of turning moment exerted on the crankshaft is you see here, this is FT. Moment about I will be counterclockwise direction, anti clockwise direction. Therefore, this direction will be counterclockwise. Okay, 
that's it we have solved the problem exactly by going through step by step procedure hope it's very clear for you okay in case if you have to find other components then we have to go for force polygon by using which we can find other components namely fb fq and so on okay as always i would like to give you a problem for practice this problem can be solved exactly in the same manner as we have done now try at home check your answer okay the next video we will be solving the same numerical problem by analytical method okay hope this video helps you in understanding this difficult concept uh, please do not forget to like this video share to your friends and subscribe the channel let me catch you in my next video thanks for watching take care bye